Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Happy Thursday for those that are tuning in live, for those that are watching this later. Happy whatever day you're watching it. It's amazing how quickly the weeks go by in this world. I don't know if you have the same experience. In the beginning, they went by like like a snail, and now they're flying. This is normal. For those who have ever gone to camp, you know that the first week of camp is 100 miles an hour, is, is slow, and then the rest of it's 100 miles an hour. This is how life works. This is, by the way, your brain adapting. This is like watching neuroplasticity in motion. In the beginning, your brain has to figure out the new world, and all of a sudden it does, and then like off we go. We'll get there hopefully in the future. This is called, a measure of this is called flow. And when you tap into it, you'll be able to accomplish quicker and more things that you couldn't otherwise. We'll get there, I hope, with God's help. Um, so yesterday we talked about this idea. Yesterday we started to have, I mean, it's, it's been the whole week. We've been having this conversation about becoming more. We're in times of challenge. We're in times where it's difficult to become the person that we think we're meant to be because the world has changed on us. And lots of people, when they go through things that are different, they, they fold. A lot of people out there are, are, are getting through life. They're like cruising. And sometimes they'll slow down and they'll speed up. And most of what they're doing fits into like a little box of opportunity of challenge. And as soon as that box either becomes great, they have too much opportunity and it just, they can't take advantage of it. Or there's too much challenge, they just break. And it's not because we can't. It's because we're not gearing ourselves. We're not preparing ourselves. We're not growing ourselves to a place in which we can become more. And for those who are joining us now for the first time, welcome. For those that have been with us the past few days, for sure, we've been trying to really get underneath this. Why is that, that we can't be more? Why is that, that we can't reach deeper into our infinite source called our souls and bring it out into our lives? Why is it that my grandfather could have his teenage years be in Auschwitz, in concentration camps and somehow this man and my and and my grandmother can somehow come to the shores of this country ptsd like that's a joke for them land on the shores don't speak the language don't have any training didn't go to college don't have anything not a dollar in their pocket and somehow dig deep into this thing called this infinite source and pull out a job a career a family happiness, grandkids, great grand. I mean, how? It's because they were forced into experiencing something that we should understand so we don't have to get forced into that to become it. Why wait for challenge to bring out the best if we talk about it and get our heads right? Then we can look out into a world that may be a little easier and and bring out the same level of greatness. There are people out there that are great because they work on it. This is what they do. They think about it. They read about it. They talk about it. This is what we got to do. So we're here. So we've been speaking about this idea that once you think you know who you are, you already limit yourself because how would you know but going backwards? How would you know who you are if you didn't pull it from your past? Where else would you know it from? You can't see into the future. So when someone thinks they know who they are, what they're really doing is saying, I know who I was. And that makes them feel a little comfortable. So they go out into the world with who they were. But that's insane. If you think about it, that means that because of where you were born or what you did in the first 15 years of your life, when life was controlled in a school and in a family, because of your circumstances that for the most part, for the first part of your life were given to you, now that's going to define you for the rest of your life? And as circumstances change, you we're not going to really adapt. We're just going to continue to use the same frameworks. 
How could that possibly be? But the comfort of thinking I know who I am, the comfort of being, uh, feeling like I, I, I know me is so much better than having the humility of saying, I really don't know who I am. I know who I was, but I have this source inside me that is infinite. And I don't know, maybe if I take whatever is in front of me with real strength and courage, I'll find a new piece of myself. I got a call yesterday from somebody who had a big challenge and they failed. Very difficult call from somebody who had to do something very hard. It's super private. I don't know how much I could even say. They had to do something really hard go someplace that was appropriate for them to go. And they couldn't bring themselves to go. And they stood outside that door for a long time and then turned around and the brokenness in his voice. Because he knew he was more. Because he knew he could have done it. But he kept on saying to himself, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. This is a major, major, major piece of our inability to find ourselves, to be the best, is that we get stuck in who I was. I want to take you down one more thing now. So we spoke yesterday about survival and greatness and how it's normal, totally normal to not want to get involved in something that's hard. That's called survival. That's the mechanism that God gave us to survive. It's not appropriate for us to do things that are challenging if they're unsafe. So we're built with the ability to stay safe, especially when we're little. If we weren't, if we didn't have these mechanisms in our brain that tell us be safe, be safe, be safe. When we're little kids and we don't have a developed mind and we don't have a sense of consequences, we'll go out of our minds. We need a little fear. Kids need a little bit of fear or else they'll do everything. Parents, impose fear on children about walking into the street because the kids don't know but we take that fear we take it with us into our adulthood and now as our brain gets smarter and we know what's really safe and what's not safe we know what's really not to do and what we really should do we just bring the fear in front of us and we go back to survival so as soon as we see something that is uncomfortable we shun from it even though our brains have developed and we know that that thing's not unsafe that's actually the path to greatness but the feeling of unsafe when it comes to discomfort feels like it's filled for our whole lives. And if you live in the world of I know who I was, you're like, oh, I feel unsafe. I'm not going to do it. Greatness is a choice. It's a system override. It's like if you have an iPhone or a Mac, every once in a while, Apple sends you an upgraded system. It's like goes from like, I don't know, they pick like, it's like zebra to tiger i don't know to lion and all of a sudden you're like i'll take ios lion that's what this is that's what this is you have a system called survival and now there's a new system upgrade called lion the lion is an upgraded system all the little kinks are worked out they can now figure out what's a threat and what's normal usage that's life We've got to upgrade our system. And it's not an, an upgrade like you press a button and it's a new upgrade. It's a gradual upgrade. If you've upgraded your system of thinking every day of your life 1%, you're a different human being. If you're learning how to upgrade your system when you, ha when you deal with a very small issue, when you get to a big issue, you're prepared. This person was telling me yesterday in, in the, in, on the drive back, he, just, he, he needed like some encouragement. He was explaining, and I was explaining to him, we were talking about this, how like for so many years, he has taken the easy way out. For so many years, he has been unable to step up in everything. He's allowed himself to define himself as being weak, as being nervous, as being anxious. And I'm not taking away people that have anxiety disorder. There's anxiety disorder. Then there's just, I'm scared. And I just won't do things that make me scared ever. And you do that your whole life in small little increments. Then when you get to do something really big, you can't do it. If, you, if we've, we're always keeping our system the same, 
We're never getting bigger. And that's what we're talking about, doing small things every day. The reason why we do uncomfortable things every day that we should do isn't because of the thing. It's because it upgrades our system. It works out all the bugs. It enables us to bring clarity as to what things are unsafe and what things are, are things that we should be doing, but they're just uncomfortable. An eight-year-old should doesn't know. But if you're 58 and we still don't know, like, I don't understand. What did you do for 50 years? I'm 40 years old and I can't tell the difference. My, if I don't know the difference in my own mind, my own feelings between unsafe and just uncomfortable, I'm working on a system that I got when I was born. I got to upgrade the system. I got to get clearer. I got to get distinctions. It's so critical we have this. We have these triggers that send us to places. We got to know the difference between being starving and just being bored for food. When are you starving and when are you just bored? So you feel like you have to eat. They're different. And if you don't know the difference, the system is still where you're a kid. Which is why like people are just eating like nonstop. It's not that they can't control themselves. It's that they don't spend, we don't spend enough time winning small battles and then thinking about them so that we can discern between when I'm hungry and when I'm bored and when I'm starving. This is a piece of this journey that I wanted to start talking about. It's a very counterintuitive piece and it may take us a little bit to unpack, but it's critical because it's, it's going to initially feel like almost the opposite of what I'm saying right now. So I may just put it out there and let, let's digest it for a day and we'll talk about it again. But let me just bring it up. In one of the most challenging moments of our history took place right when we left Egypt. So we leave Egypt as a nation. Now you can imagine the roller coaster of emotions. 210 years of slavery. And at the end, it got so bad that it was basically Nazi Germany. Like, I don't want anyone to think that Egypt was like, they worked hard and didn't get a bonus. Egypt, Egypt was Nazi Germany. If there were enough bricks, they found the baby in the arms of his mom, pulled it out of her screaming hands and stuck it into the wall. Nazi Germany. Now, you can imagine the Jews were there. God shows up, 10 miracles. They're going out of their minds. You can imagine the euphoria the high of what it was like to be a Jew leaving Egypt. The feeling of being taken care of, the feeling of freedom. And they leave Egypt and they go through this very interesting route. They actually go down. If you could, oh, I'm like, if you're hearing this or seeing this, like just somehow picture this with me. Egypt is like, if you can imagine the North, they actually walk South and they wrap around and they position themselves right in front of the, the, the Yamsuf, the Reed Sea, or the Red Sea. Although well, I think it's more accurately said Reed Sea, but all right. And they're literally poised in between Egypt and the sea. And you can imagine it as like a dad or a mom with little kids going like, what are we doing? Let's just run. Like, why are we standing like they're right there. The, guy, the bad guys are right there. Like just let's keep on moving. And God positions them. Back in Egypt, Pharaoh gets the team, his army, and they start to chase them. And now the Jews are poised between the sea and between the Egyptian soldiers. And they melt down. And what do you do when you melt down? What do you think they do? What, what would you do? You just saw God show up. You, he saved you. You're stuck again. You stop praying. And they start crying. They start praying and crying and save me, save me, save me. Because they're assuming that the way this ends is that God, like, he did it before, like 10 minutes ago. It's not like now we're remembering. We're talking about like 15 minutes ago, he brought down frogs. Like, this isn't like, well, where are you? And they start praying. And Moses is praying and God tells Moses, I'll say it in Hebrew and I'll translate, Lama Eli, why are you crying to me? 
Like, why are you praying? You see the sea? Talk to the Jews. Just keep on walking. What's the big deal? Into a sea at night that's freezing cold. Or I don't know what the degrees are, but most likely freezing cold is a desert. Desert gets cold at night. And they're Jews that have been slaves. There's no boardwalk. And everyone's like, what? That's what you wanted, God? You didn't want us to turn to you and say, please help, help, help. You wanted us to like, you know, toughen up and walk into a sea. And the commentators go crazy over this, but it took me a while. And maybe yesterday was really the time where I really got it on the phone with my friend. That I understood what really was what God was saying. There's a time to pray, a time to think. There's always a time to pray. Let's move that out. There's a time to think. And there's a time to act. And here's where people mess up. Myself, well included. We we mix it. When we're at, when we're thinking, when we should be thinking, we're too busy doing things all day. We're too busy doing, 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 doing to actually think. To spend some time alone and know what I should do today what I should do in this circumstance, what I should do in the next 20 minutes. And then when it's time to act, we think. When I told my friend, wherever my friend had to go yesterday, wherever he had to see that he couldn't do in the end, I told him beforehand, I said, listen, you know, you got to be there. You know, you got to go there. You're going to stop yourself in your tracks. You know, this is right. Don't stop putting one foot in front of the other. Don't think it'll be over in 15 minutes. Don't think you've thought enough. Do. The minute you stop in your tracks and start to think, you're going to freeze. It's exactly what happened. That's what happens to all of us. There's a call you got to make. Think about it. Should you make the phone call? Should you try that thing out? Should you do the new thing that you should be doing? Should you say those words? Should you do the thing that's uncomfortable for you? Yes or no? Think. And once you've thought about it, when you're in the moment of doing the challenging thing, the minute you stop to think, you freeze. It's because you ask the wrong questions, which we'll get to tomorrow with God's help. But you freeze because it wasn't the time to think. God said, if you walk through the sea, you'll be saved. But he needed the Jews to have faith in him. So he needed them to walk in that sea before he split it. He couldn't just split it. He needed them to do part of it. He needed them to be participants in the miracle. So he needed them to actually go a certain distance, and then he would split it. God tells you to walk in the sea. Not like a guy who you know. This is as clear as day. Moses knows exactly what he's talking about. He's taking you until now. God was telling Moses, if you stop and think now, you're going to miss it. There's a time to think and pray, but there's a time to act. Don't think while you're acting, because if you think while you're acting, Every reason why you shouldn't will come up and you'll freeze. A lot of the reasons why we can't do more is because once we're in the action, we overthink, we freeze. When the real course would have been, I know what I should have done. I thought about it beforehand and I'm just taking one foot and putting in front of the next until this thing is over. I'm not thinking until it's done. That ability to know the difference between when it's time to think and when it's time to act is the ability to know and to have, that's where you start to pull the power out. Okay, for today, let's continue to work together. Let's continue to do stuff every day together. Feel free to reach out to me. For those that are, Watching this on a platform, understand that this is both in the, in the Zoom 
We've got a WhatsApp group for daily boost. We've got, um, this is on my Instagram at Charlie Harari. This is on the YouTube page. This is on Facebook. So if you want to go back to the earlier episodes, but feel free to reach out to me or Andy for anything. But the goal really is not just to talk every day. The goal is to talk and do, talk and do, talk and do. That thing that you're holding back on today because you're overthinking it, stop overthinking it. You're overthinking it. If you know you should do it, just do it. Don't think for the 10 minutes, the 20 minutes that you're doing it. It's a difference. There's a lot here. It's called the squirrel mind from I saw this in a sports psychologist once. We'll talk about it. Until then, have an awesome day. Fight for awesome. It's a fight, but it's worth it because it makes us the people that we're meant to be. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for listening. And I just can't wait with God's help to see you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Have an awesome day.